I say again, okay? Whatever you enter, can I have attention, please? Whatever you enter into your X list here, X list should be your horizontal X list. In other words, it's an independent variable. Whatever enter Y list should be the vertical X list. So if you look at this example, what did I say? Example 5. The, the those levels are your independent variable. Correct? The 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1.0. These are all controlled. You if you enter all these values into your L1, if you enter all these values into L1, then L1 should be your X list. Got it? Yes? Or got it? Okay. So I believe many of you did it uh, on Tuesday. All right, there you get this. So we stopped here. Let's look at part two. If you had entered all the values in, all right, let's do this again. We will stat, calculate. Now, some of us may actually ask, were, uh, were quite sharp and uh, asked me, eh, what is the difference between four and eight? You look carefully at the functions, ah. Uh, What's the difference between 4 and 8? My answer to you is, there is no difference. The only difference is you swap the A and B around. So, let's remember what I see. Uh. Let's, if I choose 4, that means what you will get is a AX plus B. What the GC will return to you is the gradient is A, the Y intercept is B. If you choose A, the gradient is B, the y-intercept is A. So, whichever one, it doesn't matter. You choose the right one, just know what A means, why just know what B means. Follow what I'm saying? So, don't just memorize. So, if I choose 4 now, alright, then I store it in y1, I calculate I'll get, let's remember, A is 18.9 and then B is 9.78. Okay, remember these three values, huh? Okay? Yeah, are they the same as the one printed on your notes? If you look carefully, the one printed on your notes, uh, it is the other way around. If you compare what you see on my screen and what you see in your notes, it's the other way around. Am I right? But does it mean that the different equation is the same? Because my gradient is 18.9. Your gradient, eh? in your notes, is it also 18.9? You look at this line, AX plus B here. Mine is AX plus B, yours is A plus BX. Does it make sense? Good. So no difference, whichever one you like. Okay, whichever one you like. Good. All right. So, I want to make this note here. When you choose this, yeah, you can this are the same. All right, they are the same. It's just that the A and the B are swapped around. You can choose either one. When I say eight, plus eight. Why do I choose number option A? It's okay if you choose uh, 4. Is that right? Okay? Good. So, least square regression line. Why does the question ask for least square? Remember, how is this regression line calculated? It is recalculated such that this one squared plus this one squared, plus this distance squared, plus this distance squared, is the least. So that's why this is called a least squared regression. Got it? Yes? I repeat one more time. Huh? This line is the perfect line such that the distance squared is the least. That's why it's called the least squared regression line. So, from GC, you can get the equation of the least squared regression line. All 
Not okay. Now, it's also mentioned here. The dose levels are predetermined. If you look closely at the phrasing of the question, the 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, are all predetermined. Then you measure the y. So it is only meaningful to find the least square of y on x. You must place your dose level on the horizontal axis. Got it? Yes? Place your dose level on the horizontal axis. So it's only meaningful to have y on x, where x is the dose level, which is independent. Can? Okay. All okay? Can? Part 3. What is the question? Part 3 asks. Give a brief interpretation of the values of A and B in the context of the question. What is that in the context of the question? What is the value of A? This one is your A. Eh? Because the question asks for Y equals to A plus BX. This is your B. This is your A. This is your B. Right? The question why asks for y goes a plus bx. So what is the context in the context of the question? What is a and what is b? Mathematically, what is a? Give me attention, please. Mathematically, what is this a? It is your intercept, y intercept, correct? But that's mathematics. But the question asks for in the context of the question. So, does it make, that means when the dose level is zero, correct? What is the reaction time, correct? So, in the context of the question, 9.78 is actually the expected reaction time when there's no dosage administered. You don't tell me why in the set, ah. The question clearly asks for context of the question. Is the expected reaction time. Because you expect, you have really drawn a best fit straight line. You expect that when x is 0, y is 9.78. y is 9.78. Then what is b? b mathematically your 18.9. Here is your gradient. Am I right? It's your gradient. Now what in the context of the question, what does gradient mean? Which means you increase one ml. Gradient means this one. Rise. Sorry. Gradient uh, means rise over run, right? This one divided by this one, right? Correct? So which means this is if this is 1, this is 18.9, right? Right? This, this is what we mean by gradient, right? Oh. So, that means it is really the expected amount. Don't need to copy yet. I will, I will show it to you. But let's listen first. Does it make sense that you increase 1 ml, you expect to increase the reaction time by 18.9. Make sense? Yes? Oh. So, the gradient is the expected amount by which the reaction increase for every unit increase in the dosage. So you copy this one also, just to make sure you understand, it's per ml, sorry, sorry it's, it's, it's a milligram, mg. Per milligram, you will increase 18.9. This is important for you to understand. That's the meaning of gradient.
the next part actually asks and The next part actually asks, um, what is the expected reaction time when you are given 1.7 milligram? I think it's not difficult. If you look at the regression line here, correct? Yes, you are given 1.7 here. So what you are trying to do, you draw a best fit straight line here, here already. You draw, oh, oops, sorry. You draw a best fit straight line here. The question is asking when x is 1.7, what is your value? You can do it um, by hand or you can actually use your GC. All right, you can do it by hand or you can actually use your GC. What? Because what I did, I already store my regression line into my y here, correct? My regression line. What I can do is I go to here, I can. Uh, either do it graphically or I just say y1 1.7 or you can do it by hand or you can go to graph and then you click 1.7 oops sorry graph uh, second calculate value 1.7 you will still get the same thing which is what you see on your notes all right of course third way is to do by hand what do i mean by by hand you can actually look at your regression line and you substitute you can actually substitute your values in but just be careful we will use our five sf figure means y when x is 1.7 you substitute and you use your 5 as figure you get what's 9.7778 plus 18.857 times 1.7 equals to 41.8 seconds this is by hand and this is the long-winded way yes all right, but you can actually use your GC to do it, and I just showed it. Okay, the last part is you don't have to copy, but I want to emphasize. Okay, let me show you the question first while, while you look at the answer. The question asks, comment on the reliability when you estimate Y when X is 3.5. Okay, can 3.5. Now the answer is this. If you look carefully at your table of values here. Look carefully, yeah. Yes, you obviously can calculate a value. There's no problem because you've got a regression line. When x is 3.5, 3.8, 4.0, it doesn't matter. But you actually have only connected data from 0.5 all the way to 3 only. That means you can say, okay, between 0.5 and 3, somewhat linearly related. If you use this data to extrapolate and try to find what is 3.5, what is this, this is called extrapolation. And it's not reliable. We usually don't do extrapolation unless we have absolutely no choice. Like, for example, if your X is on time, years, then you want to do prediction of future trend. I cannot say with a lot of confidence that you can do it, but with the other data, no choice. Do extrapolation only if you have But this kind of thing is usually not the so the, so the answer, as shown in your notes, this while we can get a value, is not reliable because it's called extrapolate outside the data range. Because what you have collected, you have only collected data from 0 0.5 to 3. Does it make sense? Make sense? All okay? Sure? Okay. I don't want to say too much. 
This one you can read on your own. Okay, now example six. When do we use x on y or y on x? Just now I said. In clear-cut x is the independent variable, you will do uh, y on x. In clear-cut y is the independent variable, you do x on y. But in example 6, there is no clear-cut dependent or independent variable. 